Well, obviously, it's only my version of her life. It's it's a complete fiction. I mean, I, I read, I think, six biographies, and what it tells you really is what do you leave out. That tells you really a lot because I can't put in lots of all the uh, correspondence. There are three volumes of letters, you know, all the stuff with Miss, uh, Judge Lord and the Master. They just is in time, so you have to fi- try and think of what what the narrative is and. Although it's quite linear, and what's more interesting is um, what comes next emotionally, not what comes literally next. Um, and all I kept thinking of was those first times I first heard the very early poems. Um, but I'd met Cynthia um, a while back for a film which didn't come off, and she was in my mind all the time I was writing it. Um, so it is very much my view of trying to distill um, a lot of information into a, a, a reasonable narrative, you know, that's not going to be interminable and long. I, I leave that to the credits at the end. <laughs> <laughs>And the, the thing that's most important is what happens to the soul. And, and what I got from reading the poems is that she constantly swings between believing there is soul, something there is not. And that's almost like a torture. Um, so that was very much part of it because I, when I was growing up, I grew up a Catholic and I was very devout. I mean, I went to church. Every, I played till my knees re- bled, literally bled. And when I was 22, I realized it was just a lie, just a lot of men in frocks, really. Um, <laughs> so the, responding to her, her spiritual crisis was very important to me. Um, and the fact that the, the, that family is sort of hem, hermetically sealed so that small things have huge impact. It's very simple, really. Uh, The the first year, um, I just write little bits of notes, bit of dialogue, uh, ideas for uh, a scene. But what always happens is a sequence comes right away. It just, I don't know where it comes from, and then I know I'm all right. Um, but it, 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 the first draft is really laying down the architecture uh, and, and the basic story. And then after each um, script, then I obviously get notes from the financiers and from um, my producers. And then you take those on board and you take out, you keep on rereading it and rewriting it um, for that process. The second draft, the same thing, although by then, the architecture is there. I know that there won't be huge changes. Um, then again, that goes uh, to the producers um, and financiers for notes. Again, they're incorporated or not incorporated in the third draft. Then I do a polish, and that's it. After the polish, no, no more notes. Um, that's the way it's always been. And the, the reason I, I write it the way I do, as I say, every track, pan, dissolve, because I've never had large budgets. You've got to be able to say, on this day I need a crane, on this day we will track all day, on that day we need 25 extras, uh, and you can husband your resources that way. Um, I couldn't do it any other way, because it's something that I think is important. When you've got a small amount of money, but also what's important is you've got to husband and use that money properly, because it's other people's money, not yours. I mean, obviously, this is only my view of American English in the the 19th century. But what you must remember is the dominant power in the world was Britain. And very rich Americans tried to be sound British. You look at the early works of, say, Catherine Hepburn, and she almost uses the long A, aunt instead of aunt. You know, so there was, and Eleanor Roosevelt sounds absolutely British. She does. So, but I didn't, if these people were, very intelligent. They were all very cultured, and they would have spoken in a cultured way. But I wanted it to be, I wanted it to sound true to the 19th century. There's nothing worse than people being in a period, whatever period it is, and and they sound modern. It's just, I find it silly. There's endless, endless versions of Jane Austen. I mean, how anyone can sit through them now, God alone knows. And they all act in a modern way. And you want to say, no, they did not act like that. They did not speak like that. And most of the time, they were filthy. (laughs) 